All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Anuja Kumar. The headlines. Lok Sabha unanimously passes Constitution 126th Amendment Bill extending reservation for STs and STs for Lok Sabha and State Assembly seats. Parliament passes Arms Amendment Bill allowing only two guns for the license holders and stricter punishment for violations. ISRO to launch Earth Observation Satellite Resat 2BR1 from Sriharikota this afternoon. India reduces emission intensity of its gross domestic product by 21%, says Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar. And in badminton, PV Sindhu to begin her campaign in BWF World Tour Finals in Guangzhou, China today. The Lok Sabha yesterday passed the Constitution 126th Amendment Bill 2019 with bipartisan support. All 355 members in the House voted in favor of the bill when it was put to division. The amendment seeks to extend reservation of seats in Lok Sabha and state assemblies for SCs and STs by another 10 years. Originally, the reservation was to expire by the 25th of January next year, and the bill is intended to extend it till 25th January 2030. Replying to the discussion in the House, Minister of Law and Justice Ravi Shankar Prasad said a new generation of leadership is arising from among the deprived communities due to the political reservation being extended to them. Mr. Prasad said there is no need for initiating any discussion on the creamy lay among the SCs and STs. I want to say that our government is very clear. The SC-ST, which is a society, is not possible to have a creamy layer in it. Because they are in the past, they are in the past, and they are in the past. So, we don't have to talk about creamy layer in it. On reservation in private sector, he said the private industries are being sensitized about it. The Parliament passed the Arms Amendment Bill 2019 with the Rajya Sabha approving it yesterday. The bill seeks to amend the Arms Act 1959. It intends to decrease the number of licensed arms allowed per person and increase the quantum of penalties for violations of the law. The bill also increases the duration of the validity of arms license from three to five years. Replying to the discussion, Minister of State for Home Affairs, G. Kishan Reddy said, manufacturing of illegal arms and its smuggling is cause of concern and effective regulations are needed for the safety of the people. This law was the first law, we are getting a little bit better. This law is not new, today we are getting illegal arms, we are getting terrorists. I want to tell you, we are taking the police station and we are taking the police station. That's why the police has सुरक्षा दल के पास सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस के पास गन छीन के ले जाते हैं उसको खड़ा से खड़ा सजा होना चाहिए अर्लियर मूविंग द बिल ही सेड स्ट्रिक्ट पनिशमेंट मेजर्स हैव बीन अडॉप्टेड इन द बिल अगेंस्ट दोज हु आर फाउंड टू बी इन्वॉल्व इन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड यूज ऑफ द इलीगल आर्म्स ही सेड द बिल प्रोवाइड फेसिलिटी टू कीप हेडिटरी वेपन्स फॉर एग्जीबिशन पर्पज आफ्टर द डी एक्टिवेशन एंड सरेंडरिंग द लाइसेंस हाउ द न्यू बिल अलाउज ओनली टू गन्स फॉर द लाइसेंस होल्डर्स the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 will be tabled in the Rajya Sabha today for consideration and passage. The bill was cleared by the Lok Sabha on Monday after a marathon discussion and division. In all, 311 members voted in favor of the bill and 80 members opposed it. Replying to the discussion in Lok Sabha, before the passage of the bill, Home Minister Amit Shah said the bill does not violate any provisions of the Constitution, including Article 14. Mr. Shah reiterated that religious persecutions in Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan who have expressly declared Islam as their state religion necessitated the bill. He pointed out to the declining minority population in the three neighboring countries. He said the bill is not discriminatory against Muslims. The bill, among other things, seeks to grant citizenship to Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, Parsis, Buddhists and Christians who migrated to India till the end of 2014 from countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan due to reasons like persecutions. However, the bill exempts certain tribal areas included in the sixth schedule and those falling under the inner line permit regime in the northeastern states. It amends the Citizenship Act 1955 
the Passport Act 1920 and the Foreigners Act 1946 for implementation of its provisions. The ISRO will launch today its Earth Observation Satellite RESAT-2B R1 on PSLV C-48 from the first launch pad of Satish Dhawan Space Center Sri Harikota. The countdown for the launch began at 4.40 p.m. yesterday. ISRO said the launch is scheduled at 3.25 p.m. today, subject to weather conditions. RESAT-2B R1, a radar imaging Earth observation satellite weighing about 628 kg, will be placed into an orbit of 576 km at an inclination of 37 degree. PSLV C-48, which is the 50th mission of PSLV, will also carry nine customer satellites of Israel, Italy, Japan and USA as co-passengers. In Jharkhand, all preparations are in place for polling of third phase of state assembly elections tomorrow. Seventeen constituencies spread over eight districts will go to polls in this phase. Polling would start at 7 a.m. and due to security reasons, it will end at 3 p.m. In 12 assembly segments, in the remaining five seats of Ranchi, Hatia, Kanke, Ramgarh and Barkhatta, polling will continue till 5 p.m. More than 56 lakh voters will decide the electoral fortune of 309 candidates, including 32 women candidates in the fray. A report. All arrangements are in place for the third phase of the assembly elections. Central armed paramilitary forces and Jawans of district police have been deployed on all polling stations. In Naxal affected areas, patrolling and search operations has been intensified. Flag march being undertaken by security personnel to instill faith among electorates. In remote areas, polling party and officials have arrived at polling stations two days ahead of polling. Chief Electoral Officer of Jharkhand, Vinay Kumar Chauvet, took stock of security arrangements in Giridi district. Dharmendra Kumar Rai, AIR News, Ranchi. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Minister for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Prakash Javrekar has said, India has reduced emission intensity of its GDP gross domestic product by 21% and is on track to achieve the goal of 35% emission reduction as promised in Paris. Addressing 25th session of Conference of Parties, COP, under the UN Framework Convention of Climate Change in Madrid, Spain, Mr. Jawbreaker presented India's stand and said, India is keeping its promises on reducing the emissions. He said, climate change is real and the world recognized it and adopted a comprehensive agreement in Paris. He appealed to concentrate on the implementation of the Paris Agreement and not digress. He said India is providing a convenient action plan. The 25th Conference of Parties COP25, which commenced on December 2nd in the Spanish capital, is likely to go on till December 13th. It is being attended by over 190 countries. India, for the first time, ranks among the top 10 in this year's Climate Change Performance Index, CCPI, released yesterday at the COP25 Climate Summit. The current levels of per capita emissions and energy use in India ranked ninth in the high category, showing that emissions are still competitively low. However, despite high rating for its climate policy performance, experts point out that India has yet to develop a roadmap to phase out fossil fuel subsidies and reduce the country's high dependence on coal. New Zealand police has defended delays in recovering bodies from the White Island volcano yesterday. They said it would be madness to rush into a landing on the still moldering disaster zone. Police Minister Stuart Nash said seismologists had predicted there was a 50% chance of another eruption on the island which sits semi-submerged 50 kilometers out to sea. He added there were also poisonous gases pouring from the volcanic vent and the eruption had blanketed the island in a thick layer of acidic ash. Wildfires engulfed the Australian city of Sydney yesterday in thick haze. In some places, it was 11 times worse than the level considered hazardous and was apt to trigger fire alarms. The city cancelled ferries and some offices in the downtown area were evacuated. Local health officials advised people to stay indoors as much as possible and those with heart and lung problems were told to avoid all outdoor activity. 
Back home, the mobile number portability MNP process is going to be fast and simple from December 16th. Telecom regulator Tri issued a public notice in this regard yesterday. Under the new rules, it would take only three days to port from one network to another in the same circle, while porting for another circle will be executed within five working days. Earlier, MNP used to take a week to be completed. As per Tri, there is no change in the porting timelines for the corporate mobile connections. In Uttar Pradesh, the Pilibhit District Administration is helping farmers in converting their agriculture residues into compost manure. Farmers are also financially benefiting under MG Narega scheme. The capsules developed by ICAR play an important role in converting agriculture residue into compost. It will also stop stubble burning. More from our Lucknow correspondent. District Magistrate of Pili Bhid Bevo Srivastav said that farmers are being given rupees 2,700 per acre as base under MG Narega to dig out pit for decomposing their paddy stubble. In the same way, for sugarcane stubble, farmers are being given rupees 1,600 per acre. ICA scientist Dr. Lavleen Sukla demonstrating in the district said that a set of four capsules named Pusa Decomposer play an important role in decomposing the agriculture residuals and stopping stubble burning. Compost manure developed by this method is very rich and without chemicals, he said. MS Yadav, Yaya News, Lucknow. Moving on to sports. In badminton, PV Sidhu will begin her campaign in the season-ending BWF World Tour Finals, which begins in Guangzhou, China today. The ace Indian shuttler would be eager to turn her fortunes around when she begins her title defense against Akani Yamaguchi of Japan today. Saina Neval, Kidambi Srikanth, P. Kashyap and B. Sai Pranith are also participating in the tournament in the singles category. In men's doubles, Satvik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty will represent India. Ashwini Ponappa and N. Sikki Reddy will be seen in women's doubles and Pranav Jerry Chopra and N. Sikki Reddy in mixed doubles category. 13th South Asian Games concluded in Nepal last evening. Thousands of sports lovers witnessed gala closing ceremony held at historic Dasrat Rangshala in Kathmandu. Our correspondent reports that India finished on top with 312 medals comprising 174 gold, 93 silver and 45 bronze. Indian athletes dominated in all the events. Swimmers gained maximum 50 medals, including 27 gold. In athletics, India won 48 medals. Wrestlers got 15 gold by winning all their competitions. Shooters got 29 medals, including 18 gold. Indian boxers were also not far behind, and they won 16 medals, including 12 gold. In tennis and table tennis, India made clean sweep. Besides individual categories, India also lifted women's football titles third time in a row and won gold in men's and women's volleyball, Kho Kho, and now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Sarabjit Kaur. Thank you, Anuja. All the dailies have mentioned the shutdown of Northeast states against the passage of the Citizenship Amendment Bill or CAB. The Indian Express states, CAB in Rajya Sabha today, government sure of members despite Sena U-turn, dissent in JDU. The Hindu writes, Internet SMS services suspended in Tripura for two days. Council may redo tax slabs to boost revenue from GST, writes the Hindustan Times. Acting as a check on the centre's use of pocket veto, the Tribune courts the Supreme Court, selected judges should be appointed in six months. Anglo-Indians' nomination to Lok Sabha Assembly is done away with, reports the Pioneer. And finally, under the headline, Twitter Topper of 2019, the Mail Today mentions ISRO's Chandrayaan 2 as the most discussed event on the microblogging platform in 2019. And with that, it's back to you, Anuja. Thank you, Sarabjit. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Lok Sabha unanimously passes Constitution 126th Amendment Bill extending reservation for SCs and STs for Lok Sabha and State Assembly seats. Parliament passes Arms Amendment Bill allowing only two guns for the license holders and stricter punishment for violations. ISRO to launch Earth Observation Satellite Resat 2BR1 from Sri Harikota this afternoon. India reduces emission intensity of its gross domestic product by 21%, says Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.